So, hi, I'm Dominic and I'm studying mechanical engineer in the fourth semester of bachelor's degree. Welcome to my presentation about digital democracy with a focus on moods and co-participation. Oh. Okay. Corresponding to the Economist Democratic Index, Switzerland is one of the most democratic countries in the world. Like you can see in these two headlines on the left, corona crisis, all, uh, corona crisis also had shut down parts of democratic processes. The actual situation, it seems to me, like we are mute citizens in an observing position. So the question is, how can we guarantee basic rights and participation also in crisis, not physically, but online using new technologies. But even before Corona crisis, we saw the limitations of a, the classical democratic system. Do we have control about our data? In this context, I want to refer to Trump's election in 2016 and Cambridge Analytica creating psychoanalysis from Facebook users to make personal political advertisement. Are we still independent citizens? And how is our opinion influenced by certain parties or companies? To a short overview about my presentation. I will firstly analyze an actual democratic society and show risks developed by digital evolution and discuss then and then discuss two instruments for a digital democracy, moods and co-participation. So firstly, to the overview. Using social media, the internet of things, we, the society, are permanently generating data, the new oil. I divide this into not anonymous, personally data, like when I use social media and anonymous data. For example, on the one hand, government found out that 10%, this I don't know, but 10% of Zurich citizens use the bicycle to go to work. This data is used by the bureaucracy and is not personalized. On the other hand, the tech companies are collecting data and editing them with big data and AI. They use it to create new technologies, personalized products and advertise them personalized making us happy. They also sell data, for example, in Trump's election or in a more legal way to small and middle-sized enterprises with Google Analytics services, for example, to, ana to analyze the utilization um, behavior of their websites. With this knowledge about us citizens, they generate fil filter bubbles on social media support more extreme opinions and influence us in our opinion in any direction. To come back to the governments, the tech companies could influence our behavior in elections and votes with social media. In addition to this, they also pay lobbyists for creating law in the legislative. While classical media which is the fourth power in, in analog democracy is losing influence, this will probably end in a power vacuum of a few people. Like I explained in the last slide, the tech companies or in, out or in authoritarian countries, also the government, have much control about the people data and if the system will develop as up to now, the knowledge and the power will be accumulated there even more. We probably will end in a feudalistic system. But why is this not desirable, excluded the aspect, the aspect that, we are, that we won't be free citizens anymore? The development of technology enables that for different problems, specific suitable solutions can be found. 
so the system complexity would grow extremely. This development will be stopped by the limitation of centralized top-down systems like feudalism. So, a decentralized, federalistic, bottom-up system um, don't have these limitations. So we should take um, the, di the, uh, the digital democracy path. Digital democracy contains changes in the most parts of our society. To me, moods that are massive open online deliberation platforms and the concept of co-participation, co-creation, co-evolution and collective intelligence are the central mechanisms and tied linked to each other. Now let's have a look at Moods. Moods is a platform to exchange opinions, ideas and open discussions and find commonalities. How does it work? Each citizen can post his opinion, argumentations and ideas. They will be structured by moderators with help of AI to well-arranged layers following federalistic principles. So what are the advantages, advantages of this platform? Well, showing this diverse opinion, opinions, filter bubbles are repressed and more moderate, wilder supported decisions can be taken, for example, at votes. Ideally, we won't have the dictatorship of the majority anymore, like today, and the society won't get split more. The interaction of many human brains with opinions and ideas generate a collective intelligence to solve complex problems of the society. There, are, there need to be five basic principles that this platform work. Firstly, it needs to be transparent and decentralized to prevent despotism and hack attacks. Second, um, there need to be moderators which are elected by the communi commu community to structure the discussions. Third, AI prevent manipulations and censorship. AI can also be used as an advocate to Stiaboli, a devil's advocate. This is to generate randomly counter arguments and altern alternative ideas make the discussions more diverse. Fourth, a system that rates content and behavior of the users. So other users can class the trustworthiness of the statements. This helps also to prevent extremism and populism. And for last, a mechanism to, de to determine the role of users in the deliberation process. For my point of view, I would complement science and open data, nervous net, this is the internet of things, also tools. Therefore, the users can reference in their argumentation to data or scientific reports. Now we come to co-participation, co-creation, co-evolution and collective intelligence, which I said is uh, uh, nearly linked to uh, moods. Uh, according to Dirk Helbling's paper, Building Digital Democracy, reducing pluralism is bad as losing biodiversity because our economies and societies are like ecosystems with millions of interdependencies. Historically, a reduction in diversity has often led to political instability, collapse or war. So, it is important that so, um, federalistic structures are important. Local problems are discussed and solved just locally. Global problems need to be discussed globally, but the implementation should be done locally, adapted to the circumstances. Think 
thinking this federalistic transformation through to the end. The countries will lose on importance and there will be just cities in a worldwide networks interacting. The process of co-participation is, is, for example, assisted by the platform moves. It makes sense to develop new bottom-up tools in the direct democratic process. For example, new tools are crowd lobbying. This is a mechanism to give citizens influence in the parliament. Then the open consultation for a fast feedback and to prevent a referendum that probably splits the society and just gives uh, the question to say yes or no. And finally, the public motion to bring collective intelligent idea and ideas into the politics. Imp important is that the citizens are motivated to use a co-participation platform. So the implementation need to be user-friendly and attractive. This can be done out of a, of a combination of social media and AR. For example, while walking by a playground at the street um, that should be renovated, on my mobile phone a poll, a poll pops up asking me what I think about. I can, vo I can vote for different um, for different projects or just write my opinion. So ideas from the society can be collected. Let's come to the stakeholders for moods and co-participation. Obviously, the main stakeholder is the citizen. He will get the security that he can form his opinion independent and has control over his data. He can participate in a basic democratic process to develop the society locally and globally. Then, the government. The government, uh, the government needs to be more flexible and federalistic fragmented. But it can work more efficient using collective intelligence than now. It have to guarantee that, and it have to guarantee that human rights are always followed. Then we have science. Science will get a more important role in decision making. They should analyze data and they need to publish the reports also easy readable for everybody. I divided the enterprises to small and medium enterprise and tech enterprise. Why? So small and medium enterprises profit from local custom solutions. Um, this brings the, the process of, uh, of, of the federalistic system. And on the other hand, the tech companies, they will obviously lose uh, power. But uh, yes, and open data, data will have the effect that they need to be paid monetary for the services by the users. And, at the and for the last stakeholder, I identified the rest of the world. It is the interaction of countries to solve global problems. In utopia, this stakeholder won't exist anymore because the level of country won't be the end of a federalistic participation system. It's like it started from a city with a bigger region than countries and then go to the world and all is just one. So, summarized, the following four principles are needed that no stakeholder get harmed. The system needs to be decentralized, transparent, open data respectively, uh, control over own data. So each citizen, but also the other stakeholders can decide himself if he want to share data. But then if he share data, he shares with the whole society that it's open. Yes. And 
one last thing is all stakeholders need to participate to get a more moderate compromise. According to studies made in the European Union, it's interesting that um, it's interesting that if like um, on social media, political content po pops up, the people are more in the, the gap that people use um, online uh, platforms to discuss get smaller. And this, especially for people that are normally not interested in politics. So I think that would work. Okay. So as you see, to implement a digital democracy, a lot of changes need to be made. And the whole and whole societies need to break with their political tradition. For this reason, reason the chain, for this reason that the change is sustainable, the transform process needs a lot of time and crumb, come from bottom up. To me, it seems a bit like utopia. May, comparing, the, comparing to the speed how technologies develop, yes. So what do you think about it? With these questions, um, I would open the discussion, discussion and thank you for your attention. <laughs>